Hello, and welcome to a new year of classic judging by the cover. The series that, given half a chance, would criticise the erotic murals on the floor of a Pompeii whorehouse, where we'll be judging Contra 3 The Alien Wars by the cover. Let's skip the preliminaries and dive straight into the key element of this entire image, which is that there's a little dog on its own on the side of a giant alien structure. Why is there a dog here? Who is the owner? Is it owned by the bloke in the giant tank behind him, who is looking at him with shoulders squared with urgency? Perhaps the segmented whip-like device coming out of the tank's rear is actually a futuristic leash. All right, Mr. Smushkin, I'll let you off the leash for a bit, but don't go too near the edge, you know how I worry. His appeal falls on deaf ears as Mr. Smushkin immediately takes an interest in the dude pulling off a rather effective impression of a howler monkey swinging from a branch. And by branch I of course mean long suspicious rounded extremity protruding from the midsection of some kind of organic alien rucksack. Probably best not to speculate on the purpose of this protuberance, although it's worth noting that the big orange gremlin to whom the rucksack could conceivably be attached appears to be enormously gratified that it has been grasped by a strong manly hand on the end of a strong, anatomically questionable wrist. The other bloke on this image has other things on his mind. Firstly, that his left forearm has been replaced by a gun, although in video games that's a perfectly natural part of puberty and nothing to be ashamed about. The bigger concern is that his lower body has been entirely sawn off and the rest of him grafted onto a giant alien hand to act as a prosthetic middle finger, with which the giant alien is currently flipping off a giant blue monkey skeleton to the latter's astonishment and fury. But none of these treatments are what provoked the tortured grimace on the poor man's face. That only came about when he saw the blurb text just off to the right. Lightning quick and fully loaded with highly advanced features, There's no subject in that sentence! Designed to blow the mind in non-stop combat pumped with phenomenal graphic effects, what are you on about? You sound like a Borg drone reading aloud from a magazine advert for espresso machines. But none can deny that the cover art for Contra 3 The Alien Wars conveys the notion of being in the middle of a war with some aliens. There are aliens, there are guns, some are being fired, one has a wisp of smoke coming out shaped like a hastily doodled cock and balls on a school exercise book. In conveying a sense of alien wars, it's a lot more effective than the box art for the Japanese Game Boy version, which seems to be about the forbidden romance between a man with laser eyes and the muscular lesbian midget that grew out of his shoulder one day. Look at those kissable lips those fluttering eyes, that come-hither lack of trigger discipline. The only sign of alien presence is that chap in the sky in the top left, staring boggle-eyed with naked indignation as most of his face is cropped out of the image. I'm confused! Without the grimacing and guns in mid-muzzle flash, how am I supposed to divine the intentions of these characters? What's that glowing thing near the head of the larger specimen? Is he bemoaning that his society has resorted to constructing oil platforms on clouds? Or has he just had a really good idea? But let's get off this image because I still have to show you the European box art for Contra 3. Except Contra 3 wasn't called Contra 3 in Europe. Contra 3 in Europe was called... (sighs) Super Probotector Alien Rebels. And the human main characters were replaced by robots, whom you'll note aren't quite as well trained, and needed a helpful arrow to let them know which end of the gun to point away from themselves. There's something altogether more innocent about the vibe they were going for here, especially when you compare the blurb to the rather aloof and mechanical American equivalent. The venomous alien forces, venomous, are back and stronger than ever, with a sinister plan that threatens the earth. Assemble your weapons and stop the nasties. This blurb reads like a toothbrush advert for 12-year-olds. The nasties sound like some kind of anthropomorphic plaque monster. There's also a fairly vast conceptual difference between alien wars and alien rebels. Alien rebels implies that the aliens were in a position of subjugation under the robots and are now fighting back against some kind of unjust treatment, which is left unclear but presumably involved probotecting of some kind. 
That's the real mystery surrounding this whole business, that they were clearly going out of their way to create a more wholesome, less testosterone fueled image, and then proceeded to call it Super Probotector. Fronted by an image of a robot wistfully daydreaming about his red boyfriend and the way his enormous metallic prostate bulges healthily between his legs. Is it me? Am I just conditioned to find suggestiveness where none exists? Next you'll be telling me the eye in Nintendo doesn't look anything like a giant cock. <laughs>